and it's time to make less dumb design requirements. This is part two in a series where I will revisit. Um, wait, you have the wrong screen, I think, Hannes. Um, this not often happens. There we go. Um, I refreshed it, so we're all live and good. So um, in this uh, stream, I want to talk about the items that you see up into the right. Um, so we're going to talk about learning by doing, and then I'm going to start to make changes in the design requirement document. We have a lot of suggestions that I'm going to go through all of them. And after we've done that, I'm going to make another full pass through through the whole document, and then we are going to be done. And I'm here with my friend, Sir 3K. How are you today, Hannes? I'm feeling terrific. It's a wonderful Thursday. Thursday's the best day to just get going. Let's go through these less dumb design requirements. Yes. Here we go. Uh, so um, we are going to, um, I'm going to show uh, the CAD model just so we all can see it. It's here. I have a lot of nice new ideas for how to make it lower. I have new ideas for this, blah, 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 blah. This is not what this stream is about. This stream is about taking a more theoretical approach to the design process, which uh, I lacked in the first two machines and none of these machines worked and yesterday we did an update uh, in the main channel and seems like a lot of people think that the Marble Machine X is working so I made a context screen which is here <laughs> and the most <laughs> classical question we have is why did you stop the MMX? It was almost finished and if you hide us temporarily Hannes I can read the answer. The answer why I stopped MMX is Marble Machine X doesn't work. To manually complete this machine would take over three years, and even then it wouldn't be able to play live. One of the design requirements is that the machine is supposed to play live. So I knew even though plowing three more years into the Marble Machine X, it would not go up to this basic design requirement. And I wanted to show this as a great example on how you can use less dumb design requirements to guide your process. Um, so yeah, you can see there's a lot of issues with March next. And it would have mean, meant like three years of you patching up things, like taking the angle grinder and just redoing stuff on an already physical machine. Exactly. And that's why it's so great that we're now starting from CAD to make it work before it's physical right in front of you and you don't need this angle grinder no all the time and to be even more basic we are going to learn how to make design requirements so here we go learning by doing i have an analogy that i sometimes i um when when we do get a lot of feedbacks um so i never written design requirements in my whole life i don't even know really what they are but i'm going to learn about design requirements by doing and I got an analogy like um, when someone tries to make a kickflip on a skateboard and they don't land it when they first do it the first try, you wouldn't tell them like, well, that's not how you make a kickflip. <laughs> uh, you sh you're supposed to land it, right? <laughs> and so um, this is... <laughs> you're supposed to land it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this, some, sometimes, sometimes people give me a lot of props thinking I should be able to do things right from the first time. So... This, I think it's a cool process that we're going to go through now. We're not only going to... We're doing two things in this stream. This is where I'm going with this spiel. We're going to learn how to write design requirements, and we're going to write design requirements. Those are two separate tasks, but we're going to go through them both today. Oh, yeah! Making changes already at point number two. Okay, here we go. So uh, I have a lot of formatting suggestions here. I don't know how this works. What happens if I click OK? It just did it. And what is this? Add introduction. Can I see where the suggestion you, is? Can you click on it? I have to I have to learn this as well. <laughs> Learning by doing. Okay. Oh, I click oh, yeah, here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Lucas Vandal thinks it should be another alignment. Well, I think I fixed that. 
adding a version number for ease of referencing later year month day counter so I'll this is delete line break oh yeah okay so this one I don't know where it's in so these are some text document um, and I want to uh, make a very clean document um, so I'm going to remove clutter I'm removing this uh, oh maybe that was document open for comments by anyone with link please suggest a piece of text or thank you Martin this can be in the overview actually Let's have a nice first page. Oh, yeah, you like that. <laughs> Ooh, you stumbled into this. I'm like, oh. Yeah, and this yeah. is too too large. This is the prettiest thing Martin has designed yet. <laughs> this document. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so that's first page. So I guess what I do is that I click here. Replace overview with purpose. Okay, Lucas Vandal, I'll accept that suggestion. It's nice. Ah, 1.1. 1 .1. Yes. Lucas wants me to build a hierarchical tree because I did that elsewhere. I accept that suggestions. <laughs> so, purpose. Um, so here I have to do some thinking myself. Um, this is completely unnecessary. Um, the design requirements for Marble Machine 3 um, the purpose of the design requirements for Marble Machine is to uh, inform the design process and give best chance of success I'm um, just resigning um, and another thing that I learned picked up I think that will be in the comments later a design requirement document should be de design agnostic this is not on how we're going to solve this problem this is about what well, well no it's not about how it is what do we need the thing to do but not how. So the form from function absolutism. Um, someone has suggested that kinetic fingers will be part of it. Simon <laughs> 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 Rosen, my heart is with you. I'm going to reject your suggestion, though, because we're using uh, form from function absolutism. So this is an interesting idea. Um, Please consider changing to a human-centered design. In this case, I understand as put yourself usage interface first, then instrument, then marble paths, then machinery. Uh, so it's a cool suggestion. I, I went to the Wikipedia link. Um, let me see if I can show it a little bit better. Human-centered design is an approach to problem solving commonly used in design management and engineering frameworks that develop solutions to problems by involving the human perspective in all the steps of the problem solving process. Sounds like something for you, 3K. <laughs> wow, absolutely. And Mike Perry joined the chat here and saying these beautiful words right here, engineering is kind of a trial and error process. You design a part, then test it, assesses its performance, then redesign if necessary. You can really see the evolution of parts with learning by doing. That's exactly what you're doing here. Yeah, and and, and I was learning to doing in the physical space on the Marble Machine X, and it was just so time consuming. I had to weld stuff for two weeks, and then I learned that it was wrong. And hopefully in this CAD process, I will be able to iterate much faster. Yeah, and you learned something by doing the whole MMX process. Yes. You learned that it was hard. Human-centered design builds upon participatory action research by moving beyond participants' involvement mm, development. So, it's a little too heavy for me to... I think I should leave this here. Um, 
or I sh so what, what I really like I really like this hierarchical little tree that Lewis is suggesting here put yourself first the usage interface that's all the user inputs then instruments then marble paths, then machinery. Something about that is interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, what should I do with this suggestion? Because I, I, I don't really know what this is yet. You need to research a bit on it then. So leave it for now then. Um, what can I do? More option. Link to this comment, reply or add. Uh, what is okay? Oh, it's, it's just a reply. Okay. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to save some comments. Um, it would be great to have... Um, not like resolved or rejected. It would it would be great to have like a pause this comment or save the comment for the future feature. Yeah. Um. Because the only thing I can do is to. Okay, I'm gonna leave it for later then. Yep, yep, yep. Um. And Doro says, "Yeah, happy that you're going to that document. Very proud of you, even <laughs> though I have no saying in it." I mean, that's nice to hear. I, I know a lot of people who understands these processes want to see me do this, which I'm, which is really cool. Um, and here I'm making a joke. Kinetic fingers, washer stacks, looks that make you smile when you look at it, or cup holders will not be part of Marble Machine 3. I'm Get out of here. <laughs> I'm going to remove all jokes because this is not a joke. This anymore. is not a laughing matter. This is serious stuff. Ooh. Yep. So... Here, success is misspelled, though. It's always nice when you fail to spell success. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so now my OCD is killing me because I want to, I want to get rid of all the comments here. Um, so... I, I need a section to, to look in later. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna copy this copy, text. Copy paste it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna copy this text from Lewis. I'm gonna mark it as resolved, and I'm gonna put it in our sketch pad. So I have a monstrous sketch pad down here. Um, and I'll just save it for later like that. And Lee Loeb says, please fix typo in the sign requirements at the top for my OCD. Require. Maybe not there. I don't, s or I don't know how to spell it. Requirements. That's Ooh. right. Maybe, he oh, it's here. Ah, it's okay. <laughs> someone, someone found it. <laughs> someone has already <laughs> fixed it. So, <laughs> my friend, we have accepted the suggestions and it's fixed. The purpose of the uh, design requirements for Monarchy 3 is to inform the design process and give the best chance of success. So here, when I say the overarching design style will be formed from function absolutism, this is not design agnostic. So if I understand it correctly, this has no place in this... Um, um, this document? It's a comment somewhere else. Uh, it's it's not a design requirement. It's about the designing process. Mm. So I will do this. It's absolutely true for the process, but uh, oh, why do I have a line break here? Let's do this. So I'll leave it in the sketch pad again. Uh, here we go. Terminology. Here's a lot of suggestions from Lucas. So read the whole his whole comment, right? The keywords, how long is this comment? Um, is this all? 
The keywords must, must not, require, shall, shall not, should, should not recommend the main or are to be interested in RFC definitions. So this looks cool. Definitions. Why not? It it looks it looks like Lucas is onto something here. Um, I'm gonna accept this from Lucas. What is that? RFC twenty one nineteen. Yeah, let's let's, What's that let's take a peek. Brilliancy right there. Let's take a peek. Not found page. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Lucas is in the chat, so you can also explain here yeah so what i don't want in this document is also a lot of fluff so we have to keep it even though this looks very serious if it's not saying anything to me at the moment um it we we should also avoid fluff um so this link was dead i'm going to oh so it pointed to a page that doesn't exist the right link oh we have a nice so Run has fixed it already. Yeah, here. run. Nice one. I I accept run, and then I'll try. This is why I love this community. Oh, that was also not working. What? <laughs> anyway, I don't want to choose a name that RFC terminology must be employed. So this is something important. Okay, someone in the chat says it must. Be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but since I don't know the definition of must, I will not understand the comment. Okay. So let's, can you Google RFC terminology, 3K, and we can learn what it is. You know I can, my friend. Uh -huh. Definitions, Marble Machine 3, Marble Machine as defined in this document, Marble Machine X, second Marble Machine prototype. Love how you wrote that, Lucas. It's a prototype. Marble Machine, initial proof of concept machine to play music by actuating instruments by falling marbles. Great. Here's a suggestion. Um, marble, main component of the machine. Fix me. Replace. Fix me. Ah, it's a suggestion from someone else. I'm going to accept it and then I'm going to iterate on it. Marble. Uh, round. Object. Spherical. Spherical object. Very cool object. It's musical instruments to produce sound. Uses. Uh, nah, nah. Uh, <sighs> fix me. Ah, fix me. Is this is Vandal's um, say to like. Uh, so beat. I will suggest something. One beat equals one crank turn. Under 20 BPM equals 120 crank turns per minute. High cube container, standard chip container, door opening. Wow and flutter. I don't understand what that is. Here we have a suggestion. Channel, independent set of, of playing one note or beat. Channel. Um, I'm going to accept this suggestion, but I'm going to uh, iterate on it again. Um, channel. Um, mechanical module um, repeatable maybe repeatable mechanical module with independent set of mechanisms reading the program and playing one note Let's say something like that. Muting, fix me. Um, lever to turn. 
a channel or group of channels uh, on off. So this is some probably not completely done yet. Wow and Flutter I don't understand. So if someone um, can explain, I kind of know what the word means. Um, okay, so muting is not actually referring to the lever. It's the action to turn. To turn a lever to mute to turn off, <laughs> to turn on, to turn a channel or group of channels on slash off. Machine states, let's see here, we have a suggestion from Scott Sanders, perhaps add packed for shipping and stored when not in used. That's a great idea. Um, Packed, stored. I guess also there's a tra there's transitional states. So machine states, I guess what what was intended here is made an Ready to play, all connections are made and all assemblies attached. Running drivetrain is running, marbles are being transported, but no notes are played. Playing. Um, act stored. Perhaps. Fix me. Fix me. Acronyms. I'm gonna accept the suggestion from Lucas. Delete page break. No, I like that page break. Boom, but maybe it was in the wrong place. Um, let's see what this is. Delete the point. No, why? Okay. So, what we can see from uh, Chapter one, by the way, this uh, table of contents is automatic. So when we fill in more pages, these numbers will update automatically. Ooh. I learned that. That's myself. great design requirements right there. <laughs> For the document in itself. So this introduction um, uh, text, uh, someone is fixing the link here right now, I think. Yeah, and I'm trying to read up on it. I think it stands for request for comments at least. And basically, I think it's a way how you uh, you set up how to talk on the internet. It's for good behavior on the internet. Wow. And stuff like that. I mean, it stands for a, requ a request for comment. It's a publication in a series from the principal technical development and standard setting bodies for the internet. And... An RFC is authored by individuals or groups of engineers and computer scientists in the form of memorandum describing methods, behaviors, research, or innovations applicable to the working of the internet and internet-connected systems. Interesting. And then there's a lot of different ways, but that's, it's, a, it's a way to set up your language and your rules, basically, how to talk in the document. Okay. Very, very interesting. So we don't talk past each other on, on online. This is... So uh, tech optimism and dystopian at the same time. <laughs> and that was, yeah, and Lucas sent the link to this RFC 2119. Yeah. Has, and there, there's uh, the def definitions of some words or phrases in here. For example, if I just say uh, the word, note that the force of these words is modified by the requirement level of the document in which they are used. And then we have number one must this word or the terms required or shall mean that the definition is an absolute requirement of the specification okay so i would probably say it becomes convoluted to have to go there to go this but i'm not gonna dwell on this row one has find the perfect link so i'm gonna accept i'm going to accept um a row one suggestion here and 
here we go. We have this is the website that you're looking at, Hannes. Um, oh, so it's very short, actually. Yeah, you found that link now. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Okay, so this is something I have to learn more about, but that's good. Let's move on to the next chapter. Why? So, um, why? Let's see what Pontus Oskarsson. So, this, there are two reasons why I'm doing this project. Um, yeah, there are two contradictive. Um, I, I want to ex actually explain this. There are two, two different reasons why I'm doing this project. Um, Pontus Oskarsson, expand on this. Why do you want to play the machine live? Lika till Martin. Thank you, Pontus. So this is about that we need the levers to play the machine. And I think um, I want to stay much high level here. So I'm going to mark this as result. Um, to define uh, playing here, uh, we don't really have to do that yet because it's going to be implicit in the requirements down here. Um, I'm going to remove this. This is very high level, high level topical. So A, I want to go on a world tour playing a machine live on stage. B, I want to make my best effort possible on building the machine before I'm able to give up. Uh, no world tour. Um, the first part of this process is designed to lead up to either A or B. Both outcomes are defined as success. The only failure would be to remain in limbo for the rest to remain in limbo. So I'm gonna take this off just to make things a little more succinct. Can you check the definition for succinct? I used it in succinct? a- Succinct? Yeah, it's two C's. I used it in a text message earlier today. And I was like, I hope I was right. Okay, that's why. Clean it up a little bit. Succinct, uh, especially of something written that. Briefly and clearly expressed. Yeah, briefly Use and clearly. Use short, succinct sentences. Yeah. Three requirements. Um, this. Oh, Lucas has made a. So here we get into the. So far, we've only been in the preamble of stuff. So here we get into it. Here we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here. Buckle your seatbelts. <laughs> This section contains the specific requirements of the product to be developed. This is the most important part of the document. It must be unambiguous. Every requirement listed has only one interpretation. Interesting. Complete. Inclusion of all significant requirements. Verifiable. A requirement is verifiable if and only if there exists some finite cost-effective process whereby the final product can be checked, tested to meet the requirement. Blah, 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 consistent, modifi modifiable, traceable. Okay. Um. So this is, this is where we're really getting into something really difficult. This document has to say something that we can use, that I can use, that I can get into my head. It has to help the design process and it has to also be formal and structured. So that's 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 very very difficult for me, but I think we just have to spend some time with it. Yeah. Um I like this definition from Lucas here. Um And I think if I hmm, traceable backward, so I'm now I'm dealing with how I should treat this comment. I want to resolve them, but I also want to save them for later. If I just, I think I'm gonna keep on pasting for now. It's probably stupid, but hey. Um, 
I'll remember that I have it down here. About requirements section. Uh, uh, Mike Perry has a question here. Is it possible that budgeting should be a part of this document? Or when does that come in account? My guess is that bud. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know. Probably. Yeah, Probably. Perhaps chat knows. Is it budget questions? Is that in design requirements as well? So that we learn everything standard and practice of this. So here's a nice definition by Paul Brack and I wonder if this should be in some kind of it's a very high level definition either the more machine is a musical instrument I'm looking at here now you can read this as well I wonder if this should go on the top overview oh introduction it's called overview why hasn't it updated oh look at this now i can show you how this works you see this is introduction here uh, but it, ha it hasn't updated but then i can click this little update arrow and oh everything went wrong oh Okay, I know what's wrong here. Okay, let's just be patient and fix this. <clears throat> that smoked ham said something here that chat reacted to also. In systems engineering, we call it smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. That sounded smart. <laughs> Please hold that comment. Because I heard about smart goals. <laughs> but I don't know if those are design requirements, but maybe they are. So my my table of contents is broken because we have some sketch text. Oh yeah, the thing I posted from Lucas is formatted as a heading. I have to just make sure that all this is not formatted as a heading. Uh, let me just format. Uh, da -da -da -da. Paragraph styles, normal text, apply normal text. And now if we go up, so this is turning into a, there we go, fixed. Got it. <laughs> and now the first one is called introduction as well. That's what I wanted to show. So it's not overview anymore. Good. So this general um, text. I wonder if it's, I wonder if we need it. Uh, the marble machine is a musical instrument designed to play music by falling marbles. Marbles after dropping are recycled to be dropping again. All power for the machine is provided by hand crank, foot pedal assembly, and an optional electric motor. <laughs> music may be programmed into the machine, and instruments may also be played manually. <laughs> I love the editing in real time when you're reading. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Um, I like this text. Uh, I'm thinking... Um, Yeah, this is a big challenge for my small brain. <laughs> um, Learning heavy stuff today. Yeah, but, but it, this will get us into the mindset. Yeah. So I'm going to accept your text, Paul. I like the text, but I, I have this idea that it's not under uh, requirements, um, that it's rather like it's kind of the first... Um, 
Where is it actually? This is basically a text for someone who doesn't know what a machine is. Yeah. And this introduction here is an introduction. So there's two words. Either we're talking about the document or we're talking about the machine. And this introduction is to the document, mm. I think. Um, so I'm going to paste it down in our sketchpad. This is like the room in the Hogwarts where things uh, are hidden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's changing places. The staircases. So I'll, I'll, I'll paste it down there. So... Here we go. Fix me. Characteristics. Performance characteristics. Transportability. Physical characteristics. Ah, here we're getting into it. This is uh, heavy stuff right here. Um, so yeah. let's check this suggestion this transportation so characteristics sometimes these kind of words it's just like what do we mean yeah <laughs> so this is this feel this smells fluff to me what 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 um so characteristics what, what do you think it means here hannes characteristics for me is um I just mean it's not obvious enough. No, no, no. It, um, for me, characteristics is, oh, what's the unique thing about it? <laughs> what is its features? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Features. Yeah. Three features. So I'm going to... Um, I think this whole thing, requirements is the whole document. This should be features. So we had like what features here. Um, so this 3.1 is features. Um, and then we have, I have a sickness for capitals. I should do more. <laughs> I have a oh, fever. All caps. <laughs> Performance features, I think is, is clearer. And here we have uh, a nice, simple explanation of this document, I think, because Swan Gaming was uh, asking, what is the purpose of this document? Then Linus Öberg just said, uh, it's to define the goal without solution bias. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, 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 wait. That, go that goes... That goes on the top. This was brilliant. From what was named Linus? Uh, Linus Öberg. Linus Öberg, brilliant. Um, the defining the goal without solution bias is to define the goal without solution. And here, my friends, this is this is why we're here today in this stream, because this is something that I've never done in my whole life, and this is something that I have to learn to separate, to separate in my brain the goal from the solutions. And yeah. um, less dumb design requirements means less dumb goals. So if, if I have the goal um, to split myself into exact same humans and you would see two Martins sitting next to me, that's interesting, but probably quite impossible for, for me right now. I will probably not achieve that within the nearest hour. Mm. Um, if I have the goal to take a sip of water. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. That, that, <laughs> let's check in on our friend up there and all the friends <laughs> out there. I could achieve this goal in like one second. Done. Brilliant. So this this definition from Linus, I think this will be famous words that I will live by, is to define the goal without solution bias. Um, and 
I think I'll, I'll, I'll scrap the, the second part of my... Uh, so keep on reading those gold nuggets from the comments. Yeah, yeah. Inform the design process and give the best chance of success. That's implicit. Let me remove that. The purpose of the design requirements for Mar Machine 3 is to define the goal without solution bias. Wonderful. Love that. And here we have Linus with a suggestion. Both here and in muting, you're not defining the action. You're proposing a preconceived solution. So Linus is on me. <laughs> and <laughs> I love it. Yes. And I love it. So both here and in muting, you're not defining the action, but you're pre-proposing. But here, this is a definition. So maybe what you mean, I should remove this. So let's not define this. One beat, one crank turn revolution. This is a definition and with no solution bias. Where it's, it's design agnostic. So thank you, Linus. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, we're, we're clarifying stuff. Um, so this is what I'm talking about that we're both learning about this whole thing and we're doing it at the same time. We're learning by doing. Yep. Um, features. Um, so I'm just going to do fix me here. This is from Lucas. This transportation. This transportation must not use magnets to transport marbles. So this is a good example of, it's not, um, it's design. This is a design um, um, idea. So this should not be in the, it has a bias, it has a solution bias. So I'm going to resolve it, but I'm, I'm going to delete it. As soon as MM3 receives input power, it shall tra start transporting marbles to the top of the machine. That's the sign. That's not a requirement. I'm going to remove that. Um, so features, I think I have my features down here. Here are my features. Um, so let me just clean up this text and, and let me get to know this 3.3 .3 text first, then I should start filling it in. BPM speed. The minimum amount of marbles that can be continuously dropped per beep. I would say, um, So, so we also don't need requirements that we don't need. I think so. Every little thing here makes me think so hard. I think like um, in the end, this machine will have some limitations, and I will compose the music for and with those limitations. So. I think I can remove this feature because we don't need this design requirement. So less dumb design requirement. Let, let me just take it away. Um, MN3 should be able to drop minimum per beat for fi four beats. Dispersed reservoir must be replenished within beats while playing the minimum amount of marbles. I don't think we need, I don't think we need this. Uh, whatever, whatever it can do. You see where I'm going with this, Hannes? Mm, no. <laughs> Enlighten me. Here, the hand crank must make a full revolution with each beat. Yes. That's a... Uh, I'm going to remove this one. Set in stone. 
The hand crank, crank must make exactly, exactly a full revolution with each beat. Um, um, the top speed should be fix me BPM the machine must be fully functional at the top speed of fix me BPM um, and then we had a discussion the other day uh, the machine must play tight music at the lowest speed of fix me ppm so timing every component of the machine must actuate accurately within based on the programming So, I think this is demanding too much of us all. Um, I don't think there is a world where we can add, add a value here. That will impor inform the design process. Huh. This is... Um, this is brilliant, uh, though. The fall time of released marbles must be compensated for in relation to the crank. I'm going to accept this and say the latency of marbles fall time must be compensated for in relation to the crank. There we go. Super. Every component of the machine must actuate accurately within based on the programming. Um, oh, is the document <laughs> too many in the document now? Lucas Vandel says here in chat, you're only defining the minimum of marbles there. Not having that requirement would mean MM3 would be valid if it only transports one marble per beat to the top. Okay. Um. And Lambert Star with a brilliant comment here. This series should be named Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> we missed something there. <laughs> oh, I like this. Noise. The noise floor of running but not playing MM3 should not exceed. Um, noise requirements as a DB signal noise radio when playing. I think my ma major concern with all this is that we're way too... We have not started at the basic stuff. We're way too deep in. Uh, we're way too like, we pick... I can honestly, m I, I can make up 10,000 of these. Uh, and I think like we start, um, I'm, we're starting at the wrong end. We're starting with de with really hard details. I think I'm missing like the big, big overview, and I think it's up here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. So th this is this is. I think, I think the way I think want to write this document is that I want to have, um, and I think we should start with the user inputs as an inspiration from the human-centered design yeah. approach. 
I think that could be. I think that yeah. could be the S- first thing. Start with the things you really know first. Yeah, <laughs> and then we do all the technical babble. <laughs> yeah, and and the way the way I thought is um, how sounds like the sign, and I think like all your suggestions are brilliant there, but I think they should be in um, um, detailed requirements. So, if you remember this slide I have of the um, topic, is it here on topic that I'm very, very happy? Yes, I have it. So, we need a decreasing abstraction. So, I think most of your comments are almost down at the orange level so Uh far. And I'm not done with step two on this image. So that's why my brain is like, oh. Yeah. Well, all our brains are a little bit, uh, it, like we, we're still in the MMX part of everything. Now we need to go back and redo the fundamentals, right? Yes, exactly. So um, I think like detailed requirements assemblies. And then when we go to uh, five, uh, wait, where are we? And Mikkel Dam Junker, who are you writing this document for? Mainly it is for Martin and for all of us to understand, but this needs to be done to define what the goal is with this machine. So I think what we're talking about now actually needs to go into the introduction. Uh, So um, um, See if I can do a 1.2 here. Let me see. Uh, someone put in a nice spreadsheet, nice table. Add table by Jonah Schwartz. Nice one. I'm going to accept it right away. Um, I think that worked. I'm going to write like about the chapters. Um, what goes where. So this I'm more writing for everyone. I'm writing for us all. What um, section um, section definitions what goes where. So um Three requirements, high-level high stuff, high-level abstract stuff. Excuse me, where are we? Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. There we go. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Sorry. It's going to be a challenging live stream for everyone out there, but it's the core gang who's making us company on these yeah. kinds of live streams loveliest of lovely people out there yeah this is the like the least we're not we're not trying to get views we're trying to make art okay N- you can quote me on that <laughs> <laughs> this is how art starts okay yes <laughs> um so high level grammarly wants me to fix that i'll fix it i'm gonna make this into a um into um i think blubber bub said something uh, fun and correct here you have to write this document like you're handing it to an evil-minded genie that will implement everything you didn't specify in the worst possible way example one marble per beat noisy one time use etc <laughs> fun way to look at it i i think again like I will only take some inspiration from how an engineering company with 2,000 employees would use a no- document like this. And I, I totally I, I totally see what you mean. <laughs> but this document is not going... I'm only one person. So I only need to like take... I need to make it my own still. So um, when you delegate stuff and now we're basically right what we're writing it for right now is for me and my digital CAD process in the coming three weeks which means that if something is not written here 
I won't by mistake remove the programming wheel from the CAD files. Oh no, it wasn't in the design requirements. Um, so I see your point, but we have to kind of like take the standard way it's done, but then like, okay, we're not 10,000 employees, it's only Martin. So how can we like, how can this, this is not about making a perfect design requirement in the industry standard. It's about taking why people are writing design requirements and implementing it into our very personal personal and unique process. So I'm with you, but so far I'm not delegating any, any work. Mikkel Damjanker, right on, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also I think, I think, oh, maybe this is very important also. The CAD, the CAD file that I send to the manufacturers, that's where I need to treat it like an evil genie because they will make it the way I designed it. Yep. Um, if I put the wheels on the top of the car, I will visit the factory two months later and we have 10,000 cars with the wheels on top of, of, of the car. Um, but in this document, what you're saying is actually not true because just because the programming wheel is not in here, it doesn't mean I will delete it from my own CAD right now. So your comment made me able to think ha loud so I'm very happy for your comment um, I'm just going to put normal text here and Lucas Wendel says that creating specific requirements will give you better suggestions from everyone else and that's true and also I, I would like to fill in that also in doing this it also helps you Martin and us all to think of the machine in more easy like stripped down parts also yes so um, it's easier for everyone to understand and for us to explain specific things when we have done a thorough investigation like this one so maybe i should put the definitions right under the headline instead people won't read it up here um i'm going to add here um features what goes into this section and what were you saying about cap lock caps lock there oh, <laughs> All caps. <yeah. laughs> this section contain the very highest level stuff very highest level features no details um very highest level features um with little with little to no details um contains probably they want yes I'm not sponsored by Grammarly, but I just, can just tell you that it's a wonderful tool. So under four, detailed requirements. This section contains um, features on the component level. with a few but not too many details okay this is just language that people understand what i mean it's not defined and stuff yeah but uh, we i can't um i can't bog down uh, everything we have to make it a little pragmatic as well so i know a few but not too many details i know a lot of people want me to say like in the end i will just be able to say like in the Jin and Jang symbol, there's both black and white. <laughs> that will be the only thing I will be able to say. Um, and here's a good reminder here also from Viraptorus. Technically, you write requirements to make sure you didn't overlook anything when you test the machine once it is somewhat finished. And that's true. This is it's also a, a planning stage. And that's why we really should start at a general um, feature like you talked about, what 
what it needs to do first before we do anything more detailed, right? Hold the thought, <laughs> I, I, because it was great. I'm just going to put the last one, 4.2. This section contains the features on the component level with, and down here, with as many details as possible. Um, so, let's start with, with putting the, here, I'm going to lift these user inputs uh, to the top of section three. Uh, 3.1, user inputs. Oh, not use caps. User uh, inputs. I'm gonna paste this. What did you say, Hannes, the comment? Uh, so now you're not forgetting something at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the Raptors. Technically, you write requirements to make sure you didn't overlook anything when you test the machine once it is somewhat finished. So, I guess that's yeah. That, that's a good nuance on what I said that uh, that these requirements are only for like my CAD and. We should strive to get there. It's just like, I feel like the skateboarder who's trying to make a kickflip, but I didn't, I, I need to learn only first. Uh, so, and that's why normally I think it's very important to write design requirements and just stick with them from day one. But this is not really the process I'm planning. I'm trying to, I'm trying to use the design requirements, but we are going to be able to iterate on them. Yes. So this feeling that I see a lot of people have that we have to get it right right now that I don't that's what I don't agree with but um perhaps that's also be because because of the quote unquote failure of the modern machine x people like right? it needs to be right from the start this yeah. time but the whole thing with MMX was that you were trying to fix stuff on a physical machine patching up angle grinding things away this time it's digital first you can change how many times you want, basically, before it's produced, right? But I wanted to put in the purpose of maybe, maybe I should put something in from from the purpose of the design requirements for Modern Machine Three is to define the goal without solution bias, aiding the process in. Uh, Listing all features to make sure nothing has been forgotten when machine is assembled. So like this is this this is a great point. If we go to my favorite new if we remove ourselves from the from the screen and go to my favorite new context screen. <laughs> So this, this is what the commentary is talking about. Marbles missing, the, uh, no space for resonators, no space for microphones, um, like... Pipe exploded <laughs> and broken due to wrong gear ratio of lift. Yeah, <laughs> so all these are things um, that if there was a design requirement somewhere that the resonators must have space, uh, I would have made space for the thing, but I am reliant on. My point is that we will see in CAD things like that. That is that is part of my point. Um, this is why this de design process is different. When I CAD the vibraphone plates, I also go to CAD. So it's even more like, and here we get to it. I think we should just list the parts. First, let's list the, because if I list resonators, that means I will CAD the resonators and in CAD, I will see if there are place for the resonators or not. So I think I'm onto something here when we go to um, the user inputs. So let's start writing the user inputs from scratch. Before you start, Martin, I have a yep. really important question for you. Yep. How does thinking oil sound to you? Ooh. 
and sound fantastic. It's a good time now because I can I can list all these. Yep. I'll um, get it going. So I'm going to do them in some groups, I guess. Um, 3.1.1 power inputs. Power inputs and brakes. Um, crank, foot pedal are power inputs. And then we have um, I think I listed the brake somewhere. The brake needs to decouple from flywheel. Yeah, so this is interesting. So I'm repeating, this document should be... Oh, sorry, you didn't see that. I have to check better what you are seeing. Otherwise, this stream is very hard to follow. <laughs> Thanks to all of you engineers out there tuning in to content like this. Uh, as I said before, we're not trying to get views. We're trying to make art. The break... So, this is my text from before. Um, and I am not design agnostic here. The brake needs to decouple from flywheel. Oh, my zoom has freaked out. Um, I'm going to fix that. Um, let me fix that really, really, really fast. Uh, I'm just going to go into the preferences and fix my zoom ratio because I want to be able to zoom in a little bit. So it crashes. The zoom ratio is getting zeroed out every time I restart a computer. I searched it online and it's a known bug. Um, so we're back here. There we go. So now you can see that my zoom uh, actually works. So what I wrote here, this is what I wanted to zoom in on. The brake needs to decouple from flywheel plus brake the gear train. Um, is that the sign agnostic? Actually, yes, but it's too much level from this section. I'm only going to put it that we need a brake. So, brake. And this is like the root tree of a PBS, a product breakdown system. So, um, brake, crank, foot pedal, and brake. Do I need anything else to give the machine power and to brake it? I think I should have... I think I should have... Um, Flywheel control, flywheel decouple. Because um, if I want to play like uh, Fermat, like if, if I want to make the music sound in different tempos, so if I go. If I want to slow down here, I have to decouple the flywheel. And it's not really a power input, flywheel controls, power input, flywheel control, and brakes. I'm listing all the items in the headline. Flywheel control, uh, decoupling. Flywheel decoupling control. <laughs> this is golden content right here, everyone. Um, D -d 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 -d. So this is the part I want to omit. So this headline, power control, maybe. Power control. Crank, foot pedal, brake, flywheel, decoupling control. Those are the four. So this is the style I think we should use in section three. Not more than this. This is the high level, like what do we need? What do I need to do with the machine? So let's make a new uh, subsection. 
3.1.2. What's the next most like massive thing? Um, I guess all the levers, perhaps. Or should we think more of me playing? Um, let's do music instruments then. So we have it pretty early. It doesn't matter a lot. Music instruments. Um, so I need to um, play play bass neck play notes on bass neck I have title case sickness as well title case is when every word has a big letter in the beginning that's YouTube sickness <laughs> the YouTube sickness play notes on bass neck and I'm not even going to say left hand because we don't want a re requirement. Um, pluck bass strings. Um, play hammer jammer manually. Look at my title case sickness. Um, I'm happy, Hannes. Yeah, oh, you're happy? Yeah, because now I feel like we're starting we're starting where we should start. And I think this is going to be awesome. That makes me happy as well. Um Bridget Pettigrew, good morning from Middle Earth. Oh <laughs> wow. Wow. Black bass strings. Um So everything I need to do on the bass, play notes on bass neck, pluck bass strings. Play hammer jammer manually. We have the muting. I think that's everything from the, for the bass. Um, tuning, tuning bass guitar. Pretty important. Mm, yep. And I'm. Um, I was thinking about the muting. Um, dampening dampening the bass guitar I don't know if it's me or the machine I'm agnostic about that right here I'm just going to check this suggestion here this is a very good text here requirement example text from a digital audio mixer compacted It's very short. It's very succinct, this text here from Anonymous. So that's a great, great example. Thank you for that. Um, oh, and Anonymous also says about the bass strings here. Um, maybe I should... No, uh, the number of strings is going to be in the next section. This is high level stuff. Um, so, AMRF Arfa, the bass should be horizontal so you can play the notes easily. This is not design agnostic. I agree with you, but it does, um, it's, um, it's the thing that Linus wrote. Um, Define the goal without solution bias. So, um, oh, yes. So, um, so this is what we all need to think about. We're, we're not, we're not doing solutions here. We're not making it easy. We're, we're just defining the goal. Yeah. And by playing, we already, it's already implicit in here. Brill. Paul Brack, the below list is not a list of musical instruments. There are ways of interacting with mu Yeah. So we are at user inputs here. So that's why that's why uh, in the user inputs um, I'm listing the actions. Um, oh, so I should I should maybe music instrument inputs then. 
Soccer 77 I like less dumb design. I hear you. We do as well. Let me remove this. Let me remove this. Let me remove this. This has to be there. Yeah, this I'm gonna... Okay, base capos. Yeah, I'm not gonna have base capos on this machine, I don't think. Um... It's a, we have a section not about not necessary, but nice to have. Yeah. And I'm going to definitely, is, can I go page down? Ooh, no, I can't. <laughs> Probably you can, but. Some, I have to learn page down. Um, you actually fiddled a bit with the cyber capos on the MMX. How did you feel them, them working? Um... It looked kind of hard when you when the machine was playing the bass to slide it all the time and finding the right place for it. But as a lack of training, of course. It was it was working great, actually. Yeah, the function of it was great. Yeah. Just for your the user interface, if we call it so. So here, can I go to page four? What is this? Ah, oh, I can go there from the menu. Nice. I'm gonna put base capos on non-necessary nice to haves. Non-necessary nice to haves. Grammarly here eh, wants me to fix that. I can use the table of contents as a shortcut menu. That's good to know. So probably I should start to throw out throw people out soon because the document is starting <laughs> to act up. Um Close the door for now. <laughs> um, Hammer and Jammer should be next level. Max Tim, yeah, I like how you're thinking here, Max. Max wanting us to keep the sections clean. Uh, play Hammer Jammer uh, manually. Um, this, these are my inputs. These are my human inputs. So actually, I can just take away manually. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I think I'm gonna leave it in there. Um, tuning bass guitar. Okay, I think we're done with the bass. What all other instruments do we have on this 3000? Vibraphone. Let's do the vibraphone. Um,. Playing vibraphone manually and playing vibraphone phone manually at the same time as playing bass. Oh, jewel wield, everyone. Um. This may be, may, maybe I'm going. So I think that's the only user input. Um, vibraphone sustain. <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it a little more nice looking. And like this, playing vibraphone manually and at the same time as playing bass, vibraphone sustain. Um, what other instruments do we have? We have drums, we have a um, kick drum, snare drum, hi-hat and cymbal. Oh, Ooh. wait, 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 wait. Um, User inputs. So here's, I don't know if we're going to have them changeable. Uh, tuning uh, vibraphone resonators. So 
So these are these are potentials. This is I need switching vibraphone plates because this is we have to list everything where my, kind of my hands touch or stage hands uh, like technicians hands will touch. Uh, so it's not only the things that makes music. It's always it's also the the removable drum. Oh yeah, good one. Three K. Um, I think that's that should be almost a first. <clears throat> that's even more basic. Yeah. 3.1.1 and I'm gonna slide this down to 2 and this down to 3 so um, what did you say here? removable programming drum yeah removable programming drum and loop drum question mark removable loop drum and then uh, programming pins yeah, programming that's true. pins is a user input, and we have uh, loop pins. We're gonna call them loop pins. Um, loop pins, and we also have a timing, timing clutch setting. Ah uh, yes. Um, these are user inputs. I think. Booyah! Um, it's oil time. Ooh, nice, nice, nice. Music instrument inputs. Uh, play notes on bass neck. Playing vibraphone. Let's go over to kick drum. Tuning of kick drum. Perhaps. Dampening. No, I don't think I should. I would be so cool. Dampening of kick drum. I'm gonna list it now. You can always remove it later. Dampening of kick drum. Um, I should not also write it as I speak it, like tuning of kick drum. It should just be tuning kick drum, dampening kick drum, uh, dampening bass guitar. I shouldn't use like all these words, the and everything. It should be shorter, more succinct. Um, tuning vibraphone resonators. Uh, uh, suggestion from AMR Arfa. What about using plugs that you insert inside the resonator pipes instead of having different pipes for every note? That's going to be useful since you're going to use a full vibraphone. Um, yeah, so so um, this is the, the, this is again the sign. Um, and since we're agnostic about the design in this document, this, are, this document is not about solutions. This document is just listing um, what the parts are and maybe how they function, maybe what they need to do. But it's not about uh, finding the solutions here. Um, so I'm just going to resolve the comment. Um, and we're definitely going to find out later how we can... So how we can make a design that answers to these requirements. Um, let's, what if the program, middle, new, the way you could also change. Yeah, so this is also um, um, like a design suggestion. And please, so to James, thanks for the suggestion, but it's about design. So please, uh, same to AMR Arfa, just send them into Dropbox. So in this document, uh, we don't uh, want any um, um, solutions at all. We, it's just about writing the design requirements. Um, so let's remove this. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. First thing, first thing I saw leveling feet oh that's also user input yes um so i want a headline for for this user input i just realized i'm gonna do this like this
I'm gonna write it here so we don't. Oh, leveling feet in is is down here. Okay. Um. Lean oh, vibrato way. speed of the vibraphone. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's so many vibraphone. And how deep do you want to go? I mean, like replacing the skins on the drums. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, that's, that's good. from Brom Boromans. Um, loop pins. Because um, timing clutch that we have, yes, we have it up there. So, um, is it? You know what? I what else? Hmm. Let me see if I can switch. So I see suggesting edits. You're suggesting, aha, uh -huh, no, editing. Mm. Uh. So I'm also learning how this Google document works. I don't know why this is. Uh, Eugene Curday. Still nothing was said about microphones and the commu commutation. Hmm. With vibraphone, that's not a use input it's it can be the breakdown lever we already have up here um where is it it's here in the power control why is this purple ah oh, someone is just uh, marking it um so i'm thinking hmm you know what I'm going to temporarily, because I get... Door is closing, everyone. Yeah, I, I think uh, because it's... I realized that I'm I'm getting... Uh, I'm not being so efficient because my thoughts are interrupted. Sidetracked. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to temporarily change permissions for the document. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to put... So everyone, our viewers, permission updated... Um, so I'm going to, in this live stream, go through all the suggestions that have been made. And after the stream, I'll open the document again. And then we'll do it like that. Because I realized that I'm not uh, making a lot of progress. Uh, so um, I'm going to... And then you can better um, react to my finished vision, like version 1.1. You can give me your thoughts on that. And then I revise it and make a 1.2. It's a better back and forth, but I, I realize I'm not moving fast enough. So please give the um, suggestions in chat to 3K instead. And, yeah. and 3K will... Um, and we really didn't come out. up with anything about microphones. Is that user inputs or no? If microphones are user inputs, uh, no, but no. they have to be in here. Yeah. So microphones... Enoch Daniels, Hannes 2000, should we... Uh, <coughs> Hannes 3000, it should be right now. Uh, should we add turn off modulation on vibraphone as a nice to have as well? Turn Yeah, that's the vibraphone vibrato speed, right? Mm, mm, yep, yeah. so, so it's there. I'm going to put like this, base inputs. Um, I'm going to do... Uh, a headline for each. It's three one four. Vibraphone inputs. You won Bundeson. Yeah. Following MM3 progress with enthusiasm. Great to see that you are not giving up. By the way, it is damping, not dampening. Ooh, perfect. The latter means to make moist. <laughs> something lightly and not reducing oscillations that's a that's a that's a that's a very good point so let me fix that damping i was i had some kind of damping bass guitar is it it's it sounds wrong damping yeah damping. it sounds wrong i mean uh let's see what chat says <laughs> dampening uh, damping. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, 
kick drum inputs. Why is this page break acting up? So let me do snare drum inputs. Apparently on the next page for some stupid reason. I think I have to go through and remove all the line breaks here. Snare drum inputs, tuning snare drum, dampening snare drum. Programming pin positions, maybe I should say. No, we're just listing here. Programming pins. Snare drum inputs. So Hyatt 3.1.7 Hi hat inputs. That's only hi hat open close. Josh P, acoustic engineer here. Yes, it should be damping. And Andrew Bailey, why say damping or dampening when you could say dabbing? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> damping. Okay. That sounds wrong sounds in our wrong. Swedish ears. But yeah, we but trust chat. Yeah, I googled it and people use both of them. But the most correct term in sound should be damping. So the first here is uh, music program, music program. But what I love with this structure now is that we get a very overview over the whole thing yeah. from the very big beginning. So this is like... Um, Designing the machine in text. Yeah, th this feels like, this feels... I can hear some marbles dropping just when I'm <laughs> reading the text here. I'll hear them when I drink some thinking oil. <laughs> um, it took me some time to realize why I couldn't go on with the more like uh, random thing. We have to first lay the foundation, then we're going to build the walls, then we're going to put the roof, and then we're going to uh, put all the furniture in, and then we're going to move in to our beautiful house. Hyatt inputs. Come on, Martin. 318. 3.1.8. What other instruments do we have? We there is did. no special, no on the phones and stuff like this. Oh no, symbol. Symbol, yes. Yes. So, I'm not sure. Symbol inputs. I'm not sure. I guess that also would be maybe damping. I mean, it would be close. It would be really cool to have. It adds expression. <laughs> Damping symbol. Uh, uh, I'm going to put that. And I think we're done with... Uh, the user inputs? No, no, we're done with the music, music. instrument <laughs> user inputs. Uh, so now we go to... Oh, no, we have power control. Ross Davidson. Oh, is marble refill a user input? Oh. Do we need marble refillment? That's a good question. No, like, no. But that's an assembly. It, they should be there. In the assembly, yes. That's when you assemble the machine at the venue, you need to pull in the marbles. But then, no refillment. Hopefully. So, so hopefully for <laughs> transportation, the marble will stay in the machine. So no, but very, very good. Um, good, good try. Um, came very close. Uh, user inputs, music program, power control, bass inputs, vibraphone inputs, kick drum inputs, snare drum inputs, height inputs, cymbal inputs, that's all the instruments. Um, 
So I think we're going over to the levers. Oh. 3.1.9. Um, should I group all the levers? This is fun. We can finally define what every lever does. On our level. <laughs> I tried. I tried. I tried. Level up. <laughs> I'm just going to level with you right now. Honestly, that was kind of funny. <laughs> 3.9. On off levers. We're not trying to get views. We're trying to make art. Um, <laughs> um, on off levers. Program switch lever A, B. Program switch A, B. So I should not... Wait, wait, wait. I'm not going to on off functions, on off inputs. So here's the cool thing, Hannes. I thought I was going to list all the levers that I thought of, but no. We're just going to list the functions. Oh. So I don't know if the program switch needs to be three levers or two that I pull simultaneously, or how to do it. So this is not the levers we're talking about, it's a functionality. Mm. So this is a design requirement. It's slowly coming to me. Um, program switch. Program switch A slash B. Um, I'm going to try to make all... I brought the speed setting vibraphone. Did we put that up here? Yes. Timing indexing we have. No kinetic fingers. Insert other mechanical means of signal machine functionality over distance. Remove that. Form from function removes that. Sustain. Leveling feet we had in the basics. I think I'm just cleaning up here. No leveling feet we didn't have yet. New. No. So let me program switch A B. Um, base. Oh, that's annoying. Base on off. And for example, how much granularity if we can do what groups we need to do is for the next section base on off vibraphone because I, I want to maybe be on only put off four of the marble drops for the base or each string individually mm. all things like that that's going to be in the next section uh, vibraphone on off I have a typo issue. Here's 12. Let me do 12 and not bold. Kick on slash off riveting content. Snare on slash off. So if you have suggestions, please upload to Dropbox or right now. Or um, put them in chat for Hannes. Or go back to this document after the stream and enter them after the stream. Snare on off. Hi-hat on off. Yeah, and I'm trying to keep reading comments that perhaps would derail Martin a bit too much right now. Let's focus on getting this document done also. So I'm trying to... Let's keep it focused on what we're doing right now. Symbol on off. We're not talking about solutions. We're talking about design requirements. So already in this stream, it's it's very abstract, and that's why I'm so impressed that you're here hanging out with us. But what happened already in the stream, Hannes, is that now I kind of understand the difference between design and solution and design requirements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because design requirements have the word design in them, yeah. which makes me think that I have to design something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not actually what no. it was about. No, 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 no. No. Simultaneous sip right there. In sync. Always. 
Muting lever vibraphone. Ooh, kick beaters on off. Kick beat. Oh yes, that's right. That's different, you know. Kick beaters on off. Kick marbles on off. Foldy um, one papyrus skimming through the design docs. It's moving in the right direction. So good job, Martin Plus friends. Oh, nice. There we yeah. have it. I'm very happy for everyone's input. Uh, I'm trying to like learn how to use so massive amount of input and still be efficient about it. And I think we're getting there. Um, Meme Plex, you keep asking what other instruments are there. There should be a def definite, definite list at the top. Yeah, so, uh, uh, yes, um, it's going to come after user inputs. And I agree with you, but it's actually after this, um, because we're talking about a human-centered design idea. So I just had this idea. We start with the user inputs on the top, and then and and then it's going to come. Um, mm. uh, the f so, so we're actually not listing the things on the machine we're listing the the actions the function uh, the functions yep and the things will will appear but actually lower down um sneaky beef don't forget a cats and dogs on and off <laughs> <laughs> no room for jokes in this document but i really like that one so I'm just gonna put snare marbles on off. I had marbles on off. Symbol will not have marbles, so there's no marbles for that. So snare beaters on off. I had beaters on off. Symbol beaters on off. And as always, we have Team Cowbell in chat. Everybody saying, don't forget to add Cowbell in there. On off inputs. Um, so this is very different. I actually want to save the program switch AB because I think this looks good for on off. So here I listed strings set A and string set B, and that's too much granularity. That's too much resolution right now. We're going to stay high level, so I'm going to uh, remove that. I'm going to try if I can learn how to get bold text gone. I learned, I just learned it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Three Full steam ahead. Learning new stuff on the fly. 3.1.10. Um, Jonathan Plane, Brink, is anything going to be controlled using the feet? And yes, there is a foot pedal. Yep. Is there anything else with the feet? No. No, I don't Not think yet. so. Not Perhaps yet. have all the levers using your feet so you can dance around tapping around the levers. <laughs> I have to learn like step dance. Is it called step dance? Yeah, some of that Martin, like river dance. <laughs> so here's an idea. Here's a design requirement. Should we be able to program the sustain control for the vibraphone using programmable cam disks. This is a dream I have. Let me quickly go over to CAD. Um, that's not CAD. <laughs> that is not CAD, but it's a beautiful uh, desktop nonetheless. Yeah, we have the three Fusion 360 glitch, so never mind. Um, programmable cam disks could help. Um, I'm just going to see if I can... Wait. Ross Davidson, does there need to be an interface with whatever sort of amp or preamp the bass is being fed into? Ooh, brilliant, brilliant. Gretzky in the chat right there. Uh, bass inputs, um, bass amplifier. Yeah. Yes, well done. Which means that you have to reach it and everything. Well done. Thank you for that one. That definitely goes into there. Base, base amplifier inputs, I should just like, because it's the inputs, it's not the 
it's not the amplifier itself we're, we're listing here. Um, I'm going to see if I temporarily can hide the suggestions. Hmm. I don't know how to do that. Does anyone know how, how to hide the suggestions on the side here? Chat, you know what to do. Because if I go to viewing, um, it's like this. But can I then write? No. Then I can't write. Editing. Santiago Pose. If the loop drum has two channels, you might need both to be independent from the programming wheel so you can alterate, alternate them and perhaps some way you can switch them simultaneously. Is the loop drum also going to have uh, like the programming wheel where you shift the drum or the registrators? Oh, no. no. No, the loop drum is sitting in one place. Program switch AB or programming wheel. Programming wheel. Good definition. And then these programmable cam disks is... I'm going to put all these in the nice to haves and we're going to return to these later. Mm -hmm. I'm going to remove them and go down to nice to haves. Where is that? Here, non necessary nice to haves. I think it would be so cool in the loop. Imagine the loop drum can play. That was an open hi right there. Programmed, an open hi programmed into the loop drum. I, I'm not so good at beatboxing, but I know what I mean. <laughs> well, world champion, beatboxer. Um, so, so <sighs> the, and also sustain control for vibraphone, programmable cam disks. We're going to return to that later, uh, definitely. Yananas9931. As a silent follower since the beginning of MMX, I have to leave some words here. You're doing absolutely amazing. Seeing Martin evolve in personal development and project managing is so inspiring. Thank you so much for that comment. You are inspiring. Thank you very much. It's it's always so reassuring when people tune in to like the deeper part of, of this process is about actually learning what it takes to to finish this. And it makes us so happy to hear because we feel misunderstood by a lot of people sometimes when they're like, why don't you just finish the Marm Machine X? Uh, it was almost finished. And then hearing a comment like that, it's very, it's, it's, it's means a lot for us. So thank you. And Spackle says there really isn't a way to do it without either discarding them or going read only with the comments done. Okay, okay, yep. okay. Thank you, then I know. Um, program switch, I'm just gonna clean here to make headlines. Feet. It's not so cool when I have categories for one component, but it's fine, It's there are special stuff. I think we have all our user inputs. The ones I can think of yesterday, so uh, can think of right now. So when I open the document again, please add user inputs that we have forgotten. Um, what should we list now? So here, the MM must be able to play music using marbles, playing instruments. The MM should be playable using a hand crank. Yeah, so that's another like general thing. Um, so fix me, I'm going to remove this. Microphones, performance features. Okay, so all these very good like uh, performance features things. I'm just going to put them down into the sketch because they need to be reinserted. Um, <laughs> T does font user input creativity question mark. <laughs> So, Lucas, I think there, this was mostly your text, and I, I, I dealt with it a little bit. Um, I'm putting it down in the in the sketch pad, and it has to be reinserted on on some good good spot eventually. So let me just paste it down there in the room of requirements. Doro. 
put the graph on why MMX will not be finished to the website. This will help people to understand and we can redirect them to this document. Oh, this is a this is a good um, I'm very appreciative of that because so many people don't know they they saw the videos and they don't know that I I showed the machine when it was working at its best. Yeah. So and they didn't see the minutes before our last live stream when the pipes exploded <laughs> on the machine and we were in panic mode. No. <laughs> Tape it now. Let's see if we can get it working. <laughs> Here's a comment from Yuan Berlin. Key difference between features and ca because what what I will do in this stream is I I will read all the comments that were made before the stream so I will read everything that goes into the document. Key difference between features and characteristics. Features are used to describe physical attribute of something or someone, such as describing the face, shape, body, etc. Characteristics have more to do with character and behavior. They tend to refer to how someone acts or behaves. Okay, so that's interesting language-wise. So, according to you, Juan, um, characteristics. Okay, yeah, I, I see. I see what you mean, Juan. That's a good. Um, that's a good definition. I have a quick one here also from Satish Kumar. How about the latency adjustment that was designed yesterday? Isn't that an input? Very, very good. Gretzky in the chat. It's here. Timing clutch setting. Okay. We got it. Real. Keep them coming. I love that you're checking in. And this I read yesterday from Chris Howard. Good design requirements should strive to be design agnostic. Minimally specifies how a problem gets solved. Ideally, only identifying the problem that needs solved. Leaves room for novel solutions that weren't thought of at the design stage. And then... Qualifiable prevents feature creep when you have an exact value or range to aim for. Verifiable goals which can't be measured can't be checked off. This isn't quantifiable or verifiable. Referring to this, what I wrote here, this machine must be so reliable that Martin worries more about <laughs> audio cables from the microphones <laughs> than the mechanical function of the machine on the live shows. Yep, Chris is like. Chris is like uh, responding so um, elegantly to this yeah. without making me feel stupid. Um, this isn't quantifiable or verifiable, verifiable and allows for potential unintended solutions. If someone sabotages the audio cable before the concert or any other stress metric, yeah. does that solve true underlying design requirement? If a rehearsal concert is, to, is held to YouTube and nobody can tell any errors happen, would that be a success regardless of the actual error rate? The audience can't read the sheet music. Chris Howard, I'll give you 10, 11 out of 10 for this comment. Yeah, all the heart emojis in the world to you, Chris. That's brilliant. So, and I'm just going to save it down here in our, in the room room of requirements. Isn't the room called that in, the, in Harry Potter? It's actually called room of requirements. I oh, think. okay. Yeah, that's what they find when they need to make a seat when they create Dumbledore army. They they do that in the room of requirement. You you are the Harry Potter expert here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot that, that you don't know. <laughs> it. It's about like a boy wizard. It's really cool. Okay, yeah, I've heard of it. Um, he's the he's a he's the boy who lived right. So that room becomes what you need it to be. It's actually quite funny because. The machine will not become what I need it to be <laughs> automatically. <laughs> so, Chris, I'm going to accept your solution. Uh, maybe I should. Can I? Oh, no. What did I do? Um, what have you done? Sorry, sorry, everyone. Alfonso says here, not sure what section, but nest for eagle in case of noise. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's funny. Okay, here, performance features. So, um, there's more people. Ivo Ackerman, repeating things can get abbreviations. MM3 instead of the machine. Lucas was into the same thing. So, I'm definitely going to accept that. Um... 
Oh, I think three comments. Lucas Vandel, you mean the room of desire? Ah. Ah. So all these, I think, are not design agnostic. Um. MM3, blah, 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 blah. The maximum time to change the song, blah, 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 blah. Sound good exactly, blah, 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 blah. So down here is more wh where I want to get to. Uh, timing, blah, 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 blah. All this is going to go away. It's just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, this is not like uh, how it should be done. I'm going to put it down in... in in the elephant graveyard. Down here. Oh, it's slow. Maybe I should not have the graveyard. Are people still in the document? No, they're in, but they can't, they, they can't edit. Okay. I think it's okay. Um... And less people now. So we have we have listed user inputs. So now we're going to put features. Um, so I'm going to do 3.2. Okay, Lucas Vandel again there. No, Martin was actually right. So you were right with the Harry Potter one. Yeah, I thought you're, Lucas... You're, you're still the champ, Martin. I thought Lucas made a joke. <laughs> It is called Room of Requirements. He just says here, he sucks at fast Googling. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what? 3.1 is user inputs. 3.2 should be... Now I want to put the physical parts. Um... So how do we group them? Should we group them in abstract assemblies? This is almost like a PBS. Yeah, let's do let's do that. We we group them by physical location kind of. Or no, maybe by function. 3.2 point 1 drivetrain. I'm I'm just I'm just freebasing here. What do you think? So Let's start like this. Crank. Um crankshaft. <laughs> I was like Ruben Courtenay. Could you move the elephant graveyard to another document so it's not bogging down your working document? That's a good idea. Love it when it's a, uh, the elephant graveyard is now a term. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna put them in how they're connected to each other. Crank, crankshaft. Um Foot, pedal, um, pulleys, crankshaft, pulleys and gears. Hmm. Hmm. Am I going wrong here, maybe? What is it that you're worrying about? Yeah, so now I'm thinking about this list here. Um, this is not. This should not be a PBS. I don't think I should li try to list every part here. We listed the inputs, which is great. Yeah, this is where it turns really tricky, honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Am I already at 4.1, perhaps? Detailed requirement assemblies. Hmm. 
This section contains the features on the assembly level with a few but not too many details. Maybe three is just the user inputs and four, yeah, I think this is why I'm... Because um, we have also 4.2 later, which should probably be five. <sighs> Yeah, it's not it's not easy to it's not easy to kind of turn this document into an efficient efficient tool in this project. It's not it's not straightforward. So everyone who wants to help with this, uh, the best help is when you like take the standard solutions, but you have to also like um, put them on the situation of this project. Just like a wet blanket putting the industry standard onto the Marble Machine 3 project will not really be helpful. So this is like, we have to invent, we have to take the la creme de la creme um, from, from the technique and see how, how it can help us. And now I think... So with the user inputs, I feel really great about this. Yeah. This feels like super important. Brill. But what happens now, I'm kind of lost, to be honest. Um, so let, let me do something. Let me go through all the comments straight off. I'm just going to go through all the comments. Yeah. Um, are they beats or notes? How many notes will be in one revolution of the music? Will actually Lucas define this in the definitions down there? So, yeah, so this is a drivetrain. This is a programming wheel definition that, that will come later down there. Um, loop programming wheel the, 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 with Iowa. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna accept that from Chris. Good idea there. I'm gonna copy paste later. Maximum marble flow rate per instrument, marble type per instrument, maximum marble flow rate. Uh, yeah, I think these are all good. So sometimes, sometimes when I accept, the text comes in, and sometimes not. So when you make your suggestions, please make it like in text. So when I click it, I can get the text comes in automatically. Let's see if I can copy this, copy, paste it here. Yes. And then I'll resolve the comment. <laughs> See, what was add kinetic fingers. It's not the first time. <laughs> Try to it's, sneak it in. It's not the first time, Simon. <laughs> Evo Ackerman standard. So uh, let me. Okay, is and here is Chris again. Not quantifiable. Possibly replace the machine circulating marbles without playing. So this is uh, Chris. Have very good comments here. Needs to be silent. Yeah. So here, here we can learn because that's what we're doing today again. Um. So I wrote, marble transport system needs to be silent. And Chris is here saying, the word silent is not quantifiable. Mm. What do we mean with silent? Yeah, define it. Is it like in this archaic uh, chamber? Oh, can you find out the word for me, Anas? The Total what? silent chamber? An echo chamber? <laughs> it's not an echo, it's well. a... Um, Anachoic chamber or something like that. I just want to learn the word here again. Um, so good suggestion, Chris, here. The quietest place on earth, an anechoic chamber. Anachoic chamber, thank yeah. you. Non-quantifiable, contingent on Mar knowing Martin's... <laughs> See my rose in the chat. Please, question <laughs> mark. <laughs> here we go again with the kinetic fingers. So I'm just going to put Chris co comments in. Um, 
and Chris here again teaching us how to write a design uh, document. Flywheel, super strong with safety release, not design agnostic, core design requirement likely, without additional cranking power input, machine must decay temp no faster than da -da 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 per second. So, um, good point there again that. Um, he's gonna do this. Here is a spelling error. Thank you for that. I fixed it. How is it transported to from the truck container? Does it have wheels? Forklift comp compatible? I'm going to um, put that in. Uh, like this. So thank you for that. Oh. People have answered each other's and now they disappear there. I'm sorry for that. Attach the machine to standard cargo pallets during transport. So this is a design uh, suggestion. Spare parts and a qualified technician should be available on call wherever the machine is performing or being exhibited. Spare parts, yeah. This is a good... Yeah, something to have in the back of your head. So this almost, um, this is like um, a requirement around usage or like a requirement on tour. So you will have different requirements on different states. I love that on your tour rider, it's going to be like spare parts and marbles <laughs> instead of a lot of alcohol and food. <laughs> You want only the black M&Ms and they should be peeled. And <laughs> we also want a flanged bearing from SQF with 20 millimeter and inner diameter. Yeah, and 10,000 marbles. A Warner. A marble pit. Uh, marbles should not be uh, gone, falling into the drum. Yeah, here, here's the sign discussions. Delete line break. Um... Uh, Tammy, when able, I suggest you make a top-down map of all user interface locations that are required while playing, things like pedals, levers, etc. Considering the machine is being operated by one person, it will, be, it will be good to map out which parts are in reach of each other if they need ever, if they ever need to be operated simultaneously. Brilliant comment, um, and it goes like it goes along with the um, play together. So this is, is um, so basically like how this translates to the design requirements is like what user inputs needs to be operated simultaneously, right? Um, I'm gonna paste it in the in the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> the elephant graveyard. I love the comments so much, so I'm. Going to paste it down here. Pin it for later. We should make a separate document. I'm going to do that off stream later. Yep. Um, let me see here where we are. U1. I don't know if it's covered already, but one important design requirement is that we should try to use as many standard parts as possible and invest time in trying to find existing industry solutions to perceive problems. It's also a design idea, I, I, I think. Um, it's, not, it's not a design agnostic suggestion. I'm agreeing with you, but it doesn't have, it's not in this document. Marble sorter to make sure wrong type size marbles don't go to the wrong pathways. Or just use separate isolated circuits for marbles of different sizes. Very good comments, both of them, from Chris and Anonymous here. Um, so it comes down into the list of all the parts. So um, I'm just going to write here marble sorters in the wrong type. That's fine. Um, boom, boom, boom. And all these suggestions are going to make much more sense after I went, did a pass through on the whole document, um, because then people are going to see like how the document is and we're going to get better feedback. And in the end, we're going to have brilliant, um, um, 
document. Simon Bianchet, who I recognize, oh, recognize yeah. the name from some brilliant Gretzky suggestions. Hall of Famer. Could shift the entire program wheel over instead. Thought this would switch every channel program A, B. So this is a design suggestion, so please make a visual sketch and send to Dropbox. It's not a design requirement suggestion. Um... Sorry if this is the sign, but is there a way to have the reaction be logical or the AB genius? So basically, a, basically, yes, that is it. Okay. My guess here is that these people are onto something here. So if someone can just pause the stream and see what they're onto and make a sketch and yep. send it to Dropbox, I'm just showing the text here. You can find out the the, the um, logical or. I'm very interested in, in this Bob Bailey idea here, but if someone can make it graphically and send it to, to Dropbox in the correct uh, category, use other until we created the AB. But so for now, it's not a design requirement. Um, Chris is teaching us again. Yes. Uh, need not be. Will is a dangerous word in design requirements. While not worth the signing around, it wouldn't hurt if some aspects of it were modular. Also, with the requirement of swapping out programming wheels, easy change of war, wear parts, belts, drum or sticks, etc. The machine will to some degree be disassemblable. And so... Super impressed with with um, with Chris's input here. That goes straight to the elephant graveyard, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm also trying to take these things in when I'm when I'm reading them, to just understand more. Like. We're doing work on a very basic level here. We're trying to understand what we're actually trying to do <laughs> in this document. Yep. It's like very basic. And back to my analogy in the beginning of the stream, if a skateboarder is trying to make a kickflip and doesn't land it, the way you teach the skateboarder to make a kickflip is not to say, no, that's not way. You should land it. <laughs> <laughs> you give tips and this is what, what, what Chris is doing. Um... Dick, 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 dick. What about polyrhythms or metric modulations from Inventor Saron? Are those simply outside the scope of the program wheels programmer? Um, I recall triplet grid enabled to be programmed on the same. Is this concept worth revisiting or is it more practical to have separate wheels for double and triple meters? We will have triplets and these are... This is not really... This should be in the document, but we're not really there yet. So... Um, I'm going to resolve them now. Will any part of the design be physically prototyped before go, no go is given? Some design requirements likely to be unverifiable through purely software simulation. Um, I think prototyping is essential. This requirement should be changed to something like complete design to a satisfactory level of detail before prototyping components. So this is um, a process thing. And yeah, I think I agree a little bit. I agree a lot actually. Um, so if I understand it correctly, even if I resolve them, I have the whole comment history. Yeah, should be able to find it. It's actually right here. So so I'm not deleting the comment. How many more comments are there in this document right now? There's a couple, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think we actually should take a little break. And my suggestion today is that we leave the stream open with a little uh, short break and then continue with this. Sounds 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 like a plan. Um, sounds like a plan. Yeah. Yep. Just uh, so sit back here, relax, everyone, and we will be back shortly. We're leaving the stream open this time. Thank you, everyone, for all the suggestions. See you in a short while. Enjoy some little music here, also. Yeah, with some design suggestions, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool.
back oh that was an abruptly and to that fun hope you enjoyed some music i see in chat as leader some some people are saying nice things about the music i'm laughing because we were talking in during the break oh we're gonna have such a nice faded transition into the stream again and it was nothing like that no but that's what we're all about here. Let's cut to the chase. No <laughs> fades in between. Let's continue with this amazing work that's being done. And for those of you who are joining the stream now, we are going through the uh, less dumb design requirement document. And um, before the break, we looked at all the suggestions. We have some left, right, Martin? Yep. Yep. And we are... Most of all, we're learning by doing. So if you check in your top right corner, this is what we're doing now. We're learning by doing and we're making changes. And later I'm going to go fully through this document. And I have to say that the suggestions have been great. But the big finding of today's uh, stream is that I had no clue of how to write design requirements. And basically... Design requirements should be agnostic about um, design solutions. So a lot of the suggestions are um, on things that should not be in the document almost. So uh, I'm going to move over a little bit so we can read again because there's still some suggestions. So I'm going to, I think when we started the stream, we had like 27 pages. My goal for the end of the stream is like, five pages and then we're going to build on those that will be a much better direction to what this document actually should do and another thing is that uh, which i also said in the beginning that these requirements are for one person in cad right now it's not for a thousand em person employee business uh, company so they don't have to be they they can be uh, to our situation let's keep on rocking um Seems like people really enjoyed the music, so oh, I'm really glad we could brighten your mood there instead of complete silence, pondering all Martin's design <laughs> requirements. You've got some nice little tunes composed by the brilliance sitting next to me. <laughs> I thought, ah, uh, ash this old rag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um... I thought this mix of the last song when I put my headphones on like this is a pretty good sound. Done with <laughs> done with my left hand. What should I say? Flywheel needs to be perfectly balanced and run without vibrations. Chris Howard coming in, the teacher. Chris the teacher Howard, my favorite teacher. Absolute statements are okay, so I can't do that. Absolute statements are impossible requirements. That's such a profound lesson there. I wrote this. Flywheel needs to be perfectly balanced. So, um, just if I remove the word perfectly, absolute statements are impossible requirements. Uh, flywheel, so, he, so Chris suggests instead, flywheel, flywheels create less than blah, 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 acceleration in any axis when spun to la, la, la. Flywheels do not induce sufficient vibrations to significantly alter marble trajectories when spun to most research, more research likely needed to create comprehensive requirement. Chris, I love, I love what you have done here. You've gone in and you taught us all, like the where we were going wrong in this document. So I'm going to just uh, copy that straight in. What happened with the thing? Uh, anyway, and more re research likely needed to create comprehensive requirement. Uh, the research is being done like here in CAD and. That's why we're going to iterate on these uh, design requirements for some time. So let's keep going through. Um, manually drop marbles by triggering the gates manually. This contradicts manual playability. Yeah, so these are non-requirements. 
present in earlier machines. And you know what? This is not a section that we need in our design requirements. Bye bye. Ooh. Um, non necessary nice to have. This I'm going to leave. Uh, let's see here. Shaker module brings vibrations into the machine if designed without a counter. Wait. So this this is a design agnostic thing. So please leave all the design suggestions as images in the Dropbox. So this document is not about design. It's about um, a solution, defining the goal with no solution bias, as uh, Linus said so um, elegantly. Inventors are on add additional different types of symbols. No, but thank you for the suggestions. Simon Rosen, the meme, the legend, <laughs> the fighter. <laughs> Kinetic fingers, not necessarily nice to have. I'm going to accept your suggestion, Simon, <laughs> because it's a non necessary nice to have. And I'm no. just going to ease your mind, Mr. B Fox 1775H3K. Has it been seen that the belt cannot be installed slash removed with the crossbars now welded in place? Yes, we we have seen that, uh, but uh, we're not going to talk about that now. We're trying to have the streams a little bit more focused on a current subject that we're working on. So that will be addressed in an upcoming stream for sure. I'm 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 going to just uh, show exactly what the comment is about. If this bar is welded in, and this belt here is a full loop, uh, you can't get the belt in place because yep. the, this bar is in the way. So thank you for pointing it out, and uh, it has been addressed. Or well, it hasn't been addressed yet, but uh, it's it's been duly noted. Oh, by the way, Hannes. Ooh. Another important thing. I've gone to, uh, let me see just where I am here. On Vintergarden.net, I have made in the menu, I have... So if you go to the more the more menu item on our website, I've made a brand new menu item called the MMX, and it's this image. So we realized when we made the update yesterday that a lot of people do not, they question my decision making from giving up on the Marmachine X. And we wanted to try to provide some context for someone who might be, um, might be listening. In the dark. <laughs> so... If you ever see anyone, let's make it a meme because you, everyone are here right now, understands these things. Just give them this link. Yeah. So so you can just go to vintergatan.net slash pages slash MMX. Can you paste this link in the chat, Hannes? I can paste it in the chat, Send of course. them here and I'm answering their questions here. So just trying to provide some 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 context. Uh, docs. Let's go to docs. Okay. Problem statement. Chris, the teacher, Howard, add a quick summary of what you're trying to accomplish. Possibly has some amount of relevant background. I'm gonna accept that. Example. Is this Chris text or someone else? The original marble machine was an inspiration and beautiful introduction. The marble machine will be the next evolution. This is a great text as well. The final goal for the... So, I wonder if this is Chris. Chris the teacher Howard's texts. Which Garner fans... Wonderful. I'm going to leave this in like this. I'm just going to fix the font, though. Um, see if I can do... Oh, I should... Mechanical achieved tight and well sounding music. Um, oh, the font was different with two suggest. Chris, I'm just gonna use if it, this is some some uh, someone else's text. I I uh, apologize. Um, you you know when Grammarly only have two suggestions in this long text, you know you're dealing with with someone who knows how to write. I'm fawning <laughs> over Chris Howard in this live stream. Um, I just think Chris that everything you put in has been so um, um, unbelievably on point. Process 
this has nothing to do with design requirements, not at least for now. Um, <laughs> Zachary Save. Poor MMX has been overrun by moles. No way to take it back from them. <laughs> That's exactly true. That's exactly what happened. That is Mole infestation. <laughs> no mallet big enough to save the MMX from the moles. <laughs> so here we come to um, two very beloved sections that I think... So here, here I am a little bit, this is more of a project management section, like defining done. No, this is actually this, hmm, and process chapters, I mean, these are not design requirements. Um, so I'm, I'm going to make less dumb design requirements, that's what this stream is about. I'm going to exclude these two pages, I'm going to copy them to a new document. So. Let me just go over here and do that in the meantime. Uh, I'm going to take this out. Our document will be very short after this stream. Yeah. I think that's good. Brilliant. Keep it simple. I think that's good. Um, that's a good thing when it comes to model machines, keeping it simple. New document. Um, MMM3. MM3. Um... What should it be called then? It should be called uh, process, process design or something. I'm just pasting these. These are very important things, but it's not design requirements. It's about the how, how, the, how the process and everything. So I might post them later um, at another stage to the website. But right now we should uh, concentrate on the design requirements themselves. Um, so here, seven. So this should be now uh, six. Because I, I think I want to make... No, let's make it five then. Five. I do feel I've learned a lot today. Mm. I can't do the kickflip yet, but I've tr I practiced it a lot. Here we have Chris Howard again, <laughs> the teacher, Chris the teacher, Chris Howard. Chris wants to add, design requirements should be design agnostic wherever possible. Design requirements should be quantifiable. Design requirements should be verifiable. I'm going to add it, Chris. I'm fawning <laughs> over your precision. Um, Ryan Doherty. That's a cool name. Um, uh, not as cool as Chris Howard though, but, but it's still cool. Design requirements are implementation agnostic. They define what the system will do. They do not dictate how the system will do it. They are typically arranged in a hierarchy such that a small number of system level requirements can be decomposed ultimately into a large number of component or assembly requirements. Ooh, this is a good but heavy text. We also say that the lower level requirements are derived from the higher level requirements. I like that tree thinking. Mm -hmm. The hierarchy. Each requirement must be quantifiable and verifiable. That is, you must be able to measure each requirement and prove that it is met. This is a great explanation. This usually means that there is a number with attached units in each requirement. This is wonderful. Each requirement should be about one thing so that it requires a single test for verification, or oh, a single test for verification. A requirement can be proved to be met by test, inspection, or analysis. Requirements are typically written with a shell. For example, shell. Shall, shall. The fully assembled machine's dimensions shall not exceed blah, 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 blah. Open the system, often the system level requirements are derived from a user story or use case. E.g. part of a user story might be Martin will pack the machine into its shipping crate and forklift in it into a shipping container along with all the other shipping, created, shipping crates for the world tour from which we can derive a couple of system levels requirements dimensions. Ah, this is great. This here, Ryan, is going to be the Bible for the next 
through pass, pass through. Uh, I'm going to copy this in because this is so great because what Ryan is giving us here is like, if we tell the user story, if you just think of like, okay, Martin has written a song. Now Martin wants to play this song on the Marm Machine 3. The first thing Martin has to do is to take a programming pin and put it in to the programming wheel. Aha, user input design requirement, like that. Mm. So if, if, if I just tell the story about how I want to use the machine, um, from that story, you will find like a lot of things. For a system as complicated as this machine, having a reasonable set of requirements will tell you what you need to build and when you're finished building it. It's a good idea. Ryan Doherty, you just gave Chris Howard a run Ooh. for his money. <laughs> he passes and he scores. So I have forgotten to reply to Chris. Uh, I'm going to reply to Ryan. Ryan, this was <laughs> extremely helpful. Gretzky. Gretzky Hall of Fame level right here. Thank you so much. Please go back to Gretzky. I'll fix it. <laughs> there we go. Thank you so much. Um, I think basically Ryan told in this one passage. Uh, so I'm going to leave um, Chris's bullet points here and then I'm going to put in Ryan's uh, story. Ooh. Um, because uh, these two things is guiding all of us on where we want to uh, take this document. Um, I hope Chris has another um, comment so I can also reply to him. But because maybe they get not notifications if if they aren't aren't seeing them. So I'm gonna put resolved on Ryan. Um, it's funny Grammarly thinks that we wrote the word design requirements too many times in the document. <laughs> <laughs> Redundancy. <laughs> um, okay. Let me see. By the way, these texts is it makes me very excited. I think this these texts on, on point five here now is what we need uh, to make this document work for us in the future. Um, add priority levels to features. What must be derived from why? How must be derived from what and why? M what must be derived from why? How? From Joel J. How must I... It's probably smart, but I don't understand it. <laughs> oh, and this is... Um, I think these are language. They just fixed the language. I love when, when, when you comment like that, so the language just becomes fixed. All the design requirements have to be testable. I think that uh, Chris have um verifiable yeah i think it's mm -hmm. the same it's the same up there um design requirements dr dr use acronym um so i'm gonna accept this should we use dr for design requirements because I know I know that uh, some people are against acronyms or abbreviations. Hmm. I I don't think we should actually. No. Keep it s simple for everyone to understand. Define the users of the design and define the experience of your users with the product. I think that's a brilliant suggestion from Tammy. In this case, I would split up the users into the musician and the audience who will be listening to the music. This is a great suggestion, Tammy, because I think it puts some color to the user story that uh, mm. Chris taught us about. I'm going to take away the thing about um, DRR statements. About, so I'm going to accept this. Uh, I'm going to be a little nice here also. Brilliant, Tammy. Um, 
Thanks. This may someone maybe get a notification with a little nice shout. Um the DR are statements about the finished state of the product or pr or the process. Is instead of should be. Oh, that's important actually. Um, so I'm gonna take away the abbreviations. This was from someone else. DR DR are in present. I think are written in present tense. The present tense. Is instead of should be. DR are statements. Define. Delete page break. Okay. No. I'm getting a master class right here from, from this community. It's so touching actually. Yeah. And people spend time with us of their own free, like time is like the highest uh, currency we have on this little planet. Right, it's humbling. It's so wonderful. I tried to keep it family friendly right there. <laughs> <laughs> and I managed to. Um, Add priority levels to features. So this one, add priority levels to features. Um, I think um, this person, I already forgot the name, that's stupid. Tammy? No, this one. I have it in the history. Ryan? Ra thank you, Ryan Doherty. Um wasn't there something in there about higher and level? Here, we also say that lower level requirements are derived from the higher level requirements. But priority levels, a requirement is a requirement. So I think, I think in this document, I don't want, I don't want lower priority stuff. I don't I I think we should not be there. We should have only must haves. This should be like this cheese grater must be able to grate cheese. <laughs> yeah. But also would be fun to have bluetooth integration with it. So if we <laughs> if, if we add the fun stuff, it needs requirements. As you had have in the document nice to have features, do they need requirements as well? Yes, yeah, so so that's the um, non necessary nice to have yeah so Do they need the requirements hmm no but but what, what this comment wanted is to for us to implement um priorities for the features add priority levels to f features and i'm going to put a question mark and i'm going to leave it so please comment on this later um if this is something that we absolutely should do right now, it feels maybe that's on the lower levels. Um. Tramnak here saying everyone's been saying how much engineering they've learned here. Meanwhile, I'm learning more about project management here than in school and engineering too, of course. <laughs> that's nice to hear. I'm I'm a useless project manager, so but we're learning stuff, right? <laughs> and people get to see us learning. This is uh, I think this is nice. And B just wanted to say, I was late and then I had to lurk. But just wanted to say, I got my t-shirt. I'm in the US. The quality is just fine, which I know you're worried about. I will wear it with pride. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Awesome to hear. Thanks for the feedback. Uh, Ola Byström says, we call them shall and should requirements. Shall and should. Yeah, because this is what someone wrote like. Where did we have the shall? Yeah, requirements are typically written, written with a shall. Oh, so should is a lower priority. Yeah, and the, also A. Warner says the point of the priority of the requirements is to help you make a decision if two features conflict. Shall for highest priority, should for lower. Maybe I misunderstand that. Yeah, so... 
Can you read that again with the, um, the, the last thing you... A. You Warner. Yeah. Uh, the point of the priority of requirements is to help you make a decision if two features conflict. If two features conflict. conflict. Okay, so I'm just going to save that this down here um, as a little... Because... It should be easy later when we have the requirements to yep. go back and add uh, priority levels at a, at a later pass through. By the way, chat, I need help with English because if you see my list up to the right, I wrote full pass through as, as the last step. I, I meant like going through the document from, from top to toe. Uh, and is that a pass through? Right through? Like, how do you say that? Um, for review a review is good so here's here is uh, some comments about planning when base schedule planning on estimations of the work that needs to be done not on random dates from visual thinking very good by estimating how much work each feature or part will take to design manufacture assemble you can cal cal calculate when you will likely be done if that does not match your wish, you can decide to remove features until you have a satisfactory compromise. Otherwise, you will run into your deadlines unprepared and either ignore them, sacrifice quality by stressing or make forced bad compromises. By using a tool like the PlanMinder, theplanminder.com, you can effortlessly keep a plan up to date and take the uncertainty in your time estimates into account. That was a beautiful text from whoever I just clicked away. Um... Let me copy that. Very, very, very helpful. I'm going to copy that into... This is... Um... Oh, wait. So... Time... Requirements, or something like that. So it's funny, because time... I have a strange relationship to time... I, I can't plan stuff in the time dimension. No. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's why I'm here, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is a big, big. And so I'm happy for some teachings on that. Now I'm all, almost saw this. Uh, defining done in the what dimension. Yeah, I'm going to leave it like this. This is another document. I removed all the sketch pad stuff. To, to another document. So all the sketchpad stuff is gone from the design requirements. Um, so, okay. yeah. so we have now on step three, we have uh, pass through is fine, but we also have review, walk through, comprehensive review. Yeah, I like review best. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to fix that. Yes, very important. Otherwise, this stream would derail completely. Full review. <laughs> it's fixed. <laughs> no, man, I'm happy. Review is the word. Mm? I want to learn how to like communicate clearly, and then it's, it's better to uh, use the right word. General design uh, principles, not part of design requirements. Let's remove this and put it in our... Um, Nine side long graveyard. Sketchpad. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so let me remove. Oh, this is such a much better document already. I'm just trying to clean up the page breaks. Um. have to clean this up. So, yeah. My, um, as you can see here, my table of contents are broken because I've defined too many words as headings. <laughs> so I'm just going to fix that uh, right now. So, three, Sir 3K, please... Please read some nice uh, chats. Uh, some people are saying that you also could use tools like Trello for stuff like this. I mean, 
we have tried out Trello. Uh, I don't really know what, how that's going to help us with having a Trello page. Trello is more project management. Yeah. I, I think a text document is more apt. And Kiku, Kiku, so Kiku, so Hame. Greetings from Germany. Have fun and keep hydrated. Really important stuff to remind us. Really important stuff there. So let's say cheers to the audience, to Wilson up in cheers. the corner. He's awfully silent today. I think he felt asleep he while hates. we were going through this <laughs> document, right? Wilson hates design requirements. He's just like, what are they doing? Yeah. Where is the angle grinder? This is boring. <laughs> <laughs> I told my mom I talked yesterday about that we're gonna take the machine apart um, in France to ship it to uh, Rudesheim uh, Lucas Museum and she was like will you cut it so it comes par- sparks <laughs> it, was so, <laughs> it was so cute it was like how do you mean will you cut it and it comes sparks I, it's, she asked in Swedish <laughs> it was funny do you know how I feel right now. Totally amazing and fulfilled because Slice of Sparta oh. just joined chat here. <laughs> saying that this cat is weird. It's sha- it's <laughs> shaped like words. I love the organization and planning. It will pay off in the future big time. Great job, Martin and H3K. Save. Cheers. Woo! Thank you, Slice of Sparta. Always nice to see you here. And um, I can tell you, Slice of Sparta, that I just removed all the headings almost. So when I update this, look at our beautiful uh, table of contents. And then I'm going to go down into the document and just make the head headings, um, table headings. So I choose from the format. I choose heading one. Command option plus one. Last I tried this um, key, uh, the computer kind of died. That didn't work. Yes! <laughs> so happy. <laughs> and now we can go up to our table of contents. And yes. You want Todd print, cast, and roll. Wait, the MMX is also going to a museum? Nice. Yes, that is the plan. Both the original Marble Machine and the Marble Machine X will go to Lucas Wendel's beautiful museum in Rudesheim, Germany. The Siegfried's Mechan- Mecha- Mechanische Museum. Music cabinet. Music cabinet. Sorry. Yes. So we will be able to go and look at it. Mechanische Music cabinet. Mm. So I'm just, right now, I'm just fixing the, oh no, what am I doing? Uh, Yes. So I'm so bad with page breaks. This is probably painful for you. I don't know how to. It hurts my eyes. Please fix. (coughs) Normal text. Ah. I don't know. Okay. I'm. Uh, so where do I see all the formatting? I'm bad with this. I have to, I have to see the underlying formatting. Maybe it's a normal enter I have to do. And then maybe this is an, it's a paragraph of itself. Thank you everyone for being here and being so patient. This is riveting content right here. Learning how to format. That's important people. I think maybe I just have to hit enter without holding shift. When I done, go in and do this. Yes. Non necessary, nice to have. Non necessary, nice to have. Mm. Oh, no. Problem statement. Mm-hmm. 
There we go. I'm trying to learn the keys. This is my absolutely uh, favorite uh, section. The improvements on how to write design requirements. This is a great little tutorial for anyone right here. Um, brilliant, actually. Yeah. Oh, and that's the last page. Oh. So now I'm going to go up into our um, table of contents. I'm going to upgrade it here. And it's clean oh, again. Oh, 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 goosebumps on that moment. <laughs> Yee-hoo! <laughs> um, so we're down to 13 pages. We started with 27. That's brilliant. Um, Grinded so away half of it. I think we can actually say that we're going to move on in this stream to the full review. <laughs> Mind blown. This is going great. Yee-hoo! Let me go home. No, not yet. We're not done. And say... Oh, yes. My machine will work. And we truly, truly believe it. <laughs> so, here we go. My dear friends, introduction. Why? Features. Detail requirements. Even more detailed requirements. Non necessary nice to haves, problem statement, improvements on how to write design requirements. Problem statement. <laughs> I just need to see Simon Rosia is back in chat. I think you mistakenly removed the kinetic <laughs> fingers from non necessary nice to haves. <laughs> the funny thing, I, I don't think Simon is joking about it. Uh, uh, because I was going to leave them in, but I decided to take them out. Um, because they they contradict the form from function idea. Um, <laughs> um, and of course, you can say function is to make the audience see what the music is playing. So blah, 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 blah. I love the kinetic fingers. Uh, but but Char Charles Muller, what about 4.3? Um... Yeah, I think our naming is wrong here. I think we should do... And I want to move the problem statement because that's such a high-level thing. So I'm going to move... I'm going to rename stuff a little bit. I think um, 4 should be 4. Boom. This should be 5. Uh, Non-necessary can be 6. And then problem statement is going to be higher up. Improvements can be seven. <laughs> Swedish Scout is now upset here. Where is my cup holder? <laughs> <laughs> there was cup holders before. We removed them. They were not in the design requirements. Um, so introduction... I think a problem statement should be before or after the why. Let's do it here. Tell me why. Then nothing better. Copyright strike. Boom. We didn't sing that well. <laughs> we didn't sing well enough. It's like, uh, you know, uh, like video game karaoke. Three problem statement and then I'm just going to add a number here probably I could have done this so it's automatic 5 6 7 8 I think this document is starting to make hell of a lot of sense oh yes Introduction. Why? Problem statement. Features. Detailed requirements. Assemblies. Even more detailed. More. De even more detailed requirements. Components. Non-necessary nice to have improvements on how to write design requirements. So, of course, 4, 5, and 6 is going to need a lot of populating. I'm not going to do it in this stream. This stream has been about learning uh, 
what design requirements actually should do. And I had, I didn't know it before today. And now I feel I know a little bit more. Um, so let's go the full review from the beginning right now. We should add another version. Um, but the, the whole change log thing that people are suggesting, version numbering, this early in the process, uh, it's not important, I feel, the change log. Um, so I'm just going to give a latest update. Latest update, and it's today, uh, March 17. Because the, the, the change log, it's too early to make a change log. It's probably smart later. So I would say this page is done. Oh, wait here a bit. Jerome Blomshear, there is an extra space before wide that triggers my OCD. Now that's going to be there forever, you know. Point no. it out, it stays. <laughs> Let me try to see what I can do. Oh, there you go. Features as well, right? Here. Those things need... Oh, thank you. This is better. Okay, we have a nice first page. Introduction. The purpose of the design requirements for the Mar Machine 3 is to define the goal without solution bias. Oh, Linus. List all features to make sure nothing has been forgotten when MM3... MM3 is assembled and used. Nice. Is assembled and used. Um, fix me. Describe who the audience for this document is. This is a good point. What prior knowledge is required? Um, the document is directed describe who the audience do i need to have this yes yeah, so may may maybe maybe it makes the point yeah maybe i should make the, the point like this uh mm3 is not an engineering project with thousand employees that all need to be coordinated coordinated no no you know what we scratch that scratch it succinct remove fluff we have to make because if we make this too long we won't read it it won't mean anything so we can add that later Terminology. So this thing, RFC thing, that people says that we have to have in it, it's I think it's it's, a, it's an idea about coordination. And I talked with Hannes about this in the lunch break. If our text is too in that you can make that you can interpret it in too many different ways, the text is wrong. To to have so people have to go and look at the definitions on another link. We failed in our writing. So, and I feel that this is more for a project where you have to coordinate 200 people in a non-hierarchical stu structure. Since I'm the dictator, I know what I mean with must and must not. And maybe I could get better feedback from the audience. Maybe we can have a better conversation if we spend a lot of time learning how to talk with each other. But that could also make me not designing CAD. And CAD, they say like code is law. I say CAD is law. So um, this whole thing is convoluted. It's overcomplicated for, for my, it's how I feel right now. It's going away. I love this comment here from Salvek. Is it bad that this document looks more professional than most of the ones at my actual engineering company? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, may, maybe they spend time on the actual words and I'm doing more layout. Oh, yeah. Theirs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We spent like three <laughs> hours today. <laughs> That's nothing. It's brilliant, this. And just a big shout out to Tor Erik Larsen. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Um, so, terminology and definitions. Um, is the definitions good? Do we need this? Yeah, why it, not? I I mean, so about communication. As as always, when you demand the receiver of a message to think in two levels, you lost them, basically. So, but I mean, some of them. I mean, like the beat one. That's really good to know. I wouldn't have understand it. Yeah, but I don't want it up here. I want it in where we talk about the beat. Um, so to go up and down and find and reference information somewhere else. This is what I mean with the two layers. No, I, I don't see that we need them. They will come back. <laughs> <laughs> They're gone for now. Onto the graveyard with you. No, you're right. I should paste this into the graveyard at least. I should just not throw them out. Because these are good things to remember to maybe put in later. Um, and it might be that they are just in the wrong place. So I'm just putting them here in the sketch pad and we'll we'll, we'll get back to it. And Twitter Eric Larson comes back here saying, love the streams, guys, and we love you. Twitter Eric Larson, thank you so much. So, purpose... Um, why? There are two different reasons why I'm doing this project. A, I want to go on a world tour playing a marble machine live on stage. B, I want to make my best effort possible on building the machine before I'm able to give up. No, before I'm able to give up. Both outcomes are defined as success, successes. The only failure would be to remain in limbo. This is a little bit of a personal text. I still think it's a good one. I'm going to leave it there. Problem statement. Let me read this. I, I haven't read this whole thing. The original marble machine was an inspirational and beautiful... This is not me who wrote it. The original <laughs> marble machine was an inspirational and beautiful <laughs> instrument, loosely inspired by classic music boxes and marble machines that garnered fans from around the world. Unfortunately, producing music on it proved challenging at the best of time and induced significant frustration for all parties involved. The Marble Machine X was an iteration on the Marble Machine concept, but ultimately proved to have fundamental engineering design issues, which prevented successful completion. The Marble Machine 3, MM3, will be the next evolution in the Marble... This is a press release right here. Will be the next evolution in the Marble Machine family of musical instruments. It will be similar in character and style, but specific features and their implementation will likely be different to allow the machine to be more reliable and easier to produce. The final goal is for the MM3 to be able to go on tour with an accompanying band to play music around the world. The MM3 will have as few electronic components as possible, have a song pre-programmed into it for it to loop through, allow a musician to dynamically play all the instruments independent of the pre-programmed song, mute portions of the pre-programmed song, and adjust the tempo as they see fit during the live performance. I do have to edit the last section a little bit here. Yeah, you don't, you can't play all the instruments? Have songs pre-programmed into its dual programming, dual sets of programming wheels. Ooh. Dual Come sets. in here with the fancy words. Programming, <laughs> programming drums um drums allow a musician to dynamically play to dynamically mute all the instruments mute 
all the instruments independent of the pre group. Oh, that's all. Play some. You're right there. Dynamically play some of the instruments independent of the pre programmed song and mute portions of all the instruments independent of the something like that of the pre programmed song. And adjust the tempo as they see fit during the live performance. Good, love it. Features. Um, so here's my features. This section contains the very highest level features with little to no, no details. So this is basically my text to everyone helping out with this. Um, and then we did user inputs and here we have a lot of work to do. Um, so I'm not going to do it in this stream. This is going to be a fix me. Um, fix me. I'm also very tempted to remove everything here. Um, to not, otherwise we have comments on this. Yeah, I'm going to copy it. Yeah, I think I, I'm I'm going to remove all all these texts. Um, otherwise people will try to fix this text, and this text is bad anyway. So I'm going to uh, um, just uh. Take this text to the graveyard. Boom. Um, so, do you see what I mean, Hannes? Otherwise, people will engage a lot with with the wrong things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't waste their time. So. Same here. This section contains the features on the assembly level with a few but not too many details. Um, I'm going to take this text out. I know it's a little harsh, but we were very we were going very very wrong <laughs> <laughs> where we were. Um, it's better to start from scratch. Even more detail requirements. I'm going to remove this text. This section contains the features on the component level with as many details as possible. Jesus, we're going to empty, end up with an empty document on us. <laughs> 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 but I think it's a good lesson. I think it's a great lesson. We just went all in. I saw a lot of comments about this is not how to write design requirements. So, and it, it wasn't. Um... Not necessarily nice to have shaker module. By the way, the shaker module. I think of I. Chuku, chuku, chuku. I'm I'm super excited by that. I th I don't think I will have it. No bells and whistles on this machine. Make the drum set sound be mind blowingly tight. Make the drum drum set sound mind blowingly great. Make the vibraphone sound mind like no additional stuff, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And I love this. Improvements on how to write design requirements. Um, oh, yeah. That was a great one. Yeah. So let me take a... Uh, <laughs> empty. Empty. We only have the user inputs here. Mike so Perry says, no document is the best document. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, <laughs> Jerome Blomshire full review ends up with empty documents. <laughs> <laughs> so learn progress one percent, learning state seventy percent. Yeah, that's 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 that that I I agree. The Swedish gout. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, 
all these texts that I removed, I'm going to um, uh, like link this sketchpad. Uh, and here we can like, uh, and I'm also going to link these, uh, the, the more time project management thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so we kind of start to building a nice little project management set. And I'm most of all, I'm learning what is what and what is not, uh, the other thing. And there's some lessons in here for us all in, in, in the text that are remains that are just pure gold. I'm going to open up this document after the stream so you can, um, and I think most of all, like if you saw what this stream was about, it's like what should actually go in there. So no design solution, design agnostic. And what we want to get suggestions on now is how should we express ourselves in the detail requirements and what should we not forget? So feel free to pick things from the sketch pad and make suggestions. Um, and then down here we go even more detailed. Um, perhaps what's missing now, I feel the last thing. There's not a lot of images in there. <laughs> it's hard to read now for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think here, um, purpose. These um, design requirements should be adapted to uh, the project to the MM3 project. MM3 project. For example, at the moment, Martin is the only CAD designer in the project. Uh, the requirements are not meant to coordinate 2000 employees. Um, some industry standard demands on a DR document does not apply. No, you did it. The abbreviation. Yeah. <laughs> um, our common goal should be to try to create a DR document that makes the MM3 process efficient and successful to pick the cherries out of standard DR practice and apply the best one to the unique uh, project that is MM3. So I just think this is um, this is maybe this should be actually maybe this should be under improvements on how to write. Now may maybe it should go here. Um, this design requirements should be adapted to the MM3 project. Uh, for example, uh, how these design requirements are written. <laughs> of course, this should be adapted to the MM3 project. Dot. For example, at the moment, Martin is the only CAD designer in the project. The requirements are not meant to coordinate 2000 employees. Some industry standard demands on a DR document do not apply. Our common goal should be to try to create a DR document that makes the MM3 process efficient and successful. Um, we should try 
to pick the cherries out of standard JRPX and apply the most you the most useful ones to the unique project that is MM3. It's just replace at the moment instead uh, with at the time of writing. Oh, nice. At time of writing. Yeah. Um, so this is just my little wave to, to like, yeah, there are pra standard practices, but our goal is not to use them all. Our goal is to choose the ones that actually... I'm Thirst for revenge is burning in my mouth. I just want to finish this machine. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. And and um, I think this can't be another rabbit hole for me to spend 100 million. I can't learn it all. But if I can learn a little bit, that helps the project. And I do think, like, these hours we spent today has been absolutely golden and so valuable and i thank everyone for for their wonderful feedback and i'm looking forward to see how you feedback on this document with that my friend 3000 i think it's time for a mole it's a mole and then i just went up to the duo here give us another mole there that's, we go. That's my favorite one. <laughs> we got a really nice supportive message from Tom Wegener here. I think this is something you need to write because uh, you need to read because I don't understand it at all. So I, I, you can read it after we, after the stream. Oh, but read it out now so I can hear it. I don't understand anything. Whirling mm, floating walkable barrel, two seventy five centimeter, d. 2M depth CNC made contains programming bench, dancing space, music sta music station, drop control and storage above. Inside of the barrel collects marbles and drops them in storage overhead. Also programmable with pins. It sounds like a beautiful Marmachine poem. You you can read it after also yes. and then get the more. Thank you so much for the comment and uh, thank you everyone for tuning in uh, through this trough. <laughs> I think that's a word. Cheers, everyone. This is this is good for the project. This is really good for the project. Yeah. I'm happy that we learned something today and I'm happy to be here with my friend Sir 3K. Thanks yeah. for being here with us. It was a total blast. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next one.